Greetings and welcome to Spider-Man Gamports channel. This time, we are going to discuss boilers. Specifically, a fuel oil boiler. And this is complementing what I have already had installed, which is the PGA Series 2 gas fire boiler. Now, I've already made a video about the boiler. I was back in the day when I was particularly not feeling the greatest, because I was not... Um, I did not have my seizures under control. So when you seen my face in that video, that was because I was absolutely exhausted having so many seizures. So yeah, now now this year or last year, I was um, on the proper medication and I'm feeling so much better. And we can actually do a comprehensive and an actual legitimate discussion about hydronic heating and what it is to have a boiler in your home. Uh, the fuel oil boiler, this is the crown one. This is not the one that I had installed in my home. The one I had installed in my home is downstairs. It's, um, I'll, I'll do a video over it real quick, show you the uh, Beckett burner on it. Um, this is just right here, the documentation for another one that I was going to have side by side where I was going to use a oil fired boiler or a fuel oil furnace side next to the actual natural gas furnace as a backup unit in case I might need it and specifically in the winters here where I'm living we get negative 32 degrees Fahrenheit that is very cold that is so cold that that these tend to gum up and the actual fuel or diesel fuel or fuel oil if you will will actually gel if you're not putting the specific type of stabilizer and need some heat. I have a bottle of that. I'll show you what I'm talking about on that. Uh, yeah. When I got this system right here, this particular unit, the guy was selling it. He pulled his unit out and he, he wanted to get rid of the actual entire system. And it all, I mean, he gave me all the manuals for it. He just put it in the year before. And he's like, the expense of how much it is to run a fuel oil furnace in the winter time was unbelievable and i believe him. you know why i got receipts right here that says it and proves it that's 100 gallons right there it's 245 for another 100 gallons it's 249 for another 100 gallons mind you this is happening in two to three times a month 249 dollars that time 249 that time 200 that time. That was a cheap one, wasn't it? Uh, 199.50. Ooh, the prices finally went down on some diesel fuel there that one year. 255. Oh man, it jumped right back up again. Well, maybe you got a little bit of extra credit on that one. Yay, right? And then two, that one, that was probably a really the, probably the best year where it was $1.62 a gallon. And that was, what year was it? February the 3rd. 2016 so yeah I wasn't kidding about how expensive it is to have fuel oil running in your home my expenses now are not even topping over $120 a month to heat my home and that's a hydronic heater and that's that that uh, the wheel McLean CG a2 that I haven't that I had installed so let's do a quick glance through this book right here this is the one that I picked up. I was going to use it as a secondary, and we paid only $300 for the entire system. It had the expansion tank. It had the, um, the what is it called here? I have it back here. This right here. Draft dampener. It had that already, uh, you know, with it. It had, it, it's, I'll show it to you guys here in a little bit. It has three zoning valves already built in on the line. Oh, it was just a fan. It's just fantastic having the manuals too. It, it gives you all of the uh, you know your, your where you need to be at for your everything. I mean, I'm not even gonna speculate. I haven't gone through this too in depth. Well, because I'm not qualified. You know what I mean? It's like you have to have a qualified technician to do these things, to install them, and to do maintenance on these. I'm not doing it because my homeowner's insurance would be like, are you really qualified? Did you go to school for that? 
<laughs> or do you have a certification for that? Because these things change every year. You know what I mean? Like the certifications. So, but it's just nice to know all of these particular pressures, um, whether or not you have a, a two line or a single line pump. You know, like it, it makes a difference. It really does. And if you have a specific type of line pump, or I mean the lines on your tank, your tank may actually expand and contract during the winter time and make a terrible racket. Yeah, that happens. I've heard about that in certain homes. No, see, this would be perfectly fine if you were living in a more southern state where it doesn't get too cold. You know, you can run that every now and again, you know, and it won't cost you an arm and a leg, but if you're gonna be solely relying on an actual this for hydronic heating, I, I, I would, and you're not getting your, your bills paid for you or helped or assistance, because I didn't receive assistance for any of this. And I was here for like, I've been here five years and I had I have no cash assistance for fuel. And I was, it, it was nickeling and diming every year. And I just, I, I couldn't survive on it. You wouldn't be seeing me making these YouTube videos at all. There's just, it's not affordable, period. And we got all the wiring and all that. I, having this manual is just incredible. I'm gonna probably put, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna put it inside of a, uh, a trapper keeper to keep it safe. I have a few of them laying around here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and store it in that. I guess I'm just going to go over it pretty quick. I mean, this is what I was talking about where your tank is at. And you can have two lines. You can have a, a, the in, what is it, the inlet and yeah, whatever the other one's called. No, I like, it'll tell you. Give me one sec. All right, I'm back. Yeah, and this thing just, you, you'll hear this actually make its, um, its noise when it's running. I'm trying to get that page. shooting and this would be all the parts and components uh, you know this is just some valuable information right here Having that, so you can scrap it out and part it out if I wanted to. I I'd rather sell the whole entire unit all as as one complete device. And here's the the, the blower I was referring to. You can actually get a uh, a kit. I'll change this from utilizing fuel oil or diesel or dyed diesel. <coughs> and it's it's a really neat little uh, little device that you can attach to it that will actually allow you to run um, propane, I think a liquid propane or gas. Yeah, this, you got your nozzle sizes I believe, right? Yeah, this has got a lot of, yeah, it's that, the Beckett. And my apologies if I'm going too fast for anybody. And like I said, I, I just want to quickly go through this. And then I'll show you the actual. Boiler. Boiler. 
Yeah, here's another thing right here on these nozzles. I'll show you a, no a nozzle too. What happened with mine a couple winters ago, right along New Year's, was it New Year's? No, it was a little bit after that. It was really, right after that really, really cold snap that we had, it was a negative 32 degrees, like I was saying, uh, a couple years back, and the nozzle got clogged up, and what happened is that the, um, the fill oil filter failed, and it shredded on the inside, and it came down and actually got clogged up into the, uh, <coughs> into the nozzle. And when that nozzle gets clogged up, it will literally roar in your house and make your entire house shake like um like a, a diesel truck jake breaking <laughs> i'm not kidding you it's and, and the amount of soot or creosote that comes off of it it's just oh it's just so wretched uh, people don't tell you about the you know the this it, it's discouraging it really is to have fuel oil for heat i mean it's messy as hell but it, it could be. It could be a heck of a lot better. I mean, if they, especially if there was, I don't know, it's a, the amount of maintenance you got to do on it too. I mean, I, I'm not telling you not to get one of these, and I'm not telling you to change out your system right this minute, but change out your system right this minute. <laughs> <laughs> Keep this as only a secondary. Um, having a, a, a wood one outdoors, an outdoor wood one, that would be nice. But good God, you're going to be going out there with those negative snap, all that cold weather in the middle of the night. You have to put a couple of logs on it. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I said, we're just going to go right quick through it. If you, guys need, if you want to, go ahead and hit the pause button. Yeah, that's a little fan that you have to have it going in there. And there's the assembly, and there's the cover and hood. This usually does not come with it. This is a secondary part, and they're like 300 bucks, if not more. I'm, yeah, and I've seen other models, too, that are not just Beckett. Um, the one I have that was installed in the house was actually a Wheel McLean, but it had Beckett components on it, which was really interesting. And yeah, we already know what the draft one does here. And then of course, here's the, the two stage pump where you have inlet and then you have your outlet or return port where it cycles it back if it doesn't use it. Yeah. Cool. And then warranty. And then this would be the expansion tank, isn't it? Air purge and expansion tank. So yeah, somebody was telling me that um, way to reduce the reducing valve on my system. The only reason why we did it that way is because it was a reused part from... It was a brand new part that we already had, which was the expansion tank. The extral or extral? Yeah. Expansion tank. And it had that already built in. And when they installed, they weren't expecting to use this tank setup. And I was like, why don't you guys just go ahead and use that tank set up, and then if we have to later on down the road, just cut it out and put a new, you know, put a, a different one in there. And that's what they did. And I was like, awesome. Let's recycle parts when we need to recycle them. All right? And then part two will be on this. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. Everybody, I'm back. All right, here is the CGA Series 2 Will McLean gas-fired hydronic boiler. That's what I'm using it is for hydronic heating. It's not for um, steam. And yeah, I I absolutely love this machine. To heat my home, oh yeah. I'll never go back to another furnace ever again. This I'm going to stick with the Will McLean brand. I This is the second year that I've had this, and I haven't had no issues whatsoever. You know, knock on wood. <laughs> But no issues whatsoever with this unit. Later on this month, later on this month or next month, I'm going to have my furnace maintenance done for the first time. I'll have them come in and, and clean everything and make sure everything's running fine. And then we're planning on cutting out both of the zoning valves that I have installed right now and another set of valves that are um, weeping by. 
they had a little bit of a leak on them and then have a lot of vertebrae and corrosion coming off of the actual handles so we'll have that all cut out and uh, I'll put new valves in before and after the zoning valves in case they have an issue and if they do have an issue we could easily take them back out again and put new ones in without having to dump the system, purge it, and then having to recharge it or whatever they have to do for that particular process. Remember, I'm going to go really quick through this, so be sure to hit that pause button. And my apologies if I go in the opposite direction of what you're looking for. I, yeah, this system is awesome. I don't even hear it running now. I am I'm, the other system. I that that fuel oil one. I heard that thing roaring every time, and with my stress levels, I and, and not having my medical condition under proper medication yeah it was just a nightmare for me I, every time I'd hear it roaring I'd be like oh great is it gonna go out is it gonna run out of fuel again or, or you know it was just just so many things that just goes right through your mind like well for me it was it was like I, I couldn't it was just like a constant state of dread and despair thinking that this thing is just gonna absolutely fail on me the fuel one this one, no way, no, no, this one, I have, I have no worries whatsoever about this one having any major issues for the next, say, 20 years. If anything, it'd be the, um, what's the gas line area, the little, I'll show you here what I'm talking about. I'm sure that part will be displayed here on in a diagram somewhere. And I'm sure that the uh, reducing valve, the secondary reducing valve, would probably fail too on the expansion tank because my original one did. And then, um, what else was a problem too? Um, I don't want to say a check valve. Float valve. That's what it is, those float valves. Those things like to go bad every now and again too. This was all done for me and I was just so thankful. I have yet to change my um, boiler's temperature yet either. It's um, it's set at like a maximum of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't want to adjust it any bit different. I go in there every, I think every other day or every every week. I always go in there to check the system to make sure it's working properly. Like, like I said, though, it, it would be so easily noticeable if there's something wrong with it. It would give you a code. Maybe a fault code right on it. It's got that little digital display. You know, the LED display on it, as well as a, uh, a numeral display, too. Yeah, I, I really... Uh, love the thermostats that I have too. The the old ones with the mercury filled uh, um, switch. With the hydronic heating, 
it wraps around the entire space or the perimeter of the area that you're heating and by the time it reaches that thermostat you're getting cooked out like you're already warm and then by the time it hits that it's warm again and if you don't have it set just right you know the thermostat's not working properly like those uh yeah here's the warnings service and yeah I, I always check it for daily stuff and check boiler area make sure there's no water anywhere or anything like that but like i said there have i've had no issues whatsoever and i'm going to be having my maintenance personnel stopping over to check it here in a little bit and this is a little i was just going to say a little bugger this thing right here oh i hate having this above the actual furnace like when you see them built they'll they'll put a, a, a one of those valves right there and then it'll, if it pops or leaks it'll get everywhere all over everything and you're like oh come on same thing as an expansion tank too if it if that tends to leak or something it'll get all over everything This is the Estonian belt right here. I love that. With the digital display on it. And feel free to put these videos on like 2x until you get to a spot where you uh, where you're looking for. Unless you're, if you want these manuals. You should be able to find them on their website in PDF format. I, I believe I already have that as well. I think I have it on PDF. And this. Having a physical copy is nice too so that you can bring it down with you. But if you have it on PDF, you just use your phone and you can go right through step by step. Yeah, I didn't see the actual uh, component that I was talking about where I would think that the... Uh, like the flame tray or whatever that would be called uh, that would be the only thing that would be worried about it rotting out on it if we get like some natural gas that's a little rotten you know a little acidy or acidic you know, where it would rust that out and ruin it come on camera what are you doing <laughs> It does not like the white paper and the block diagrams. Okay, here we go. Is that a heat exchanger? There we go. This is the area I was talking about. These, these failing right here, or this whole area here where you just need to clean that. And that would be called the what manifold. Yeah, that's what it's called. My apologies, everyone. Like this system is newer to me than the, um, the fuel elks. I was watching another YouTuber. Um, he tears into these systems. Not particularly this, uh, the more so the fuel oil ones, and when he does all the the boiler ones, and, and ugh, I learned so much from him on how to maintain that system to get a couple more years of life out of that thing. Uh, when you when you see that, when you see it, I'll, I'll, I'll get really close up around it, and you see all the rust in that thing. You'd be amazed that it actually still runs. And if I was to ever um, sell it to someone, I'd be like, yeah, it still works. It runs. I don't know how long it's going to run for. So if you wanted it out in your cabin or your, you know, 
this place or that, especially if it's not going to need that much heat. It'd be fine for that. Emergency usage. Yeah. And then user information manual. Oh, sure. Yeah, this is casual. Read through it. Give me one second here. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. <laughs> Printed paper. It always makes me sneeze. I think the worst is the uh, the ink on newspaper. Oh. Yep. I hope this is helping out anyone in the future of thinking of picking up a new furnace. Um, this was affordable. This was not going to break, break the bank for me on having this, specifically this particular unit, installed. I had another person quote me at around by $7,500 for a similar system. But that was one that does hot water for the house as well, where it does both. And it was like a hybrid system and I was like okay so if that goes bad not only would I be out hot water or heat for my home but I'll be out hot water too I don't think so I, I would rather have it separate thank you especially if it's a mini boiler just you know I, I mean the convenience of having the one over the other is perfectly fine yeah I can understand that but it's not worth that price tag of that much I, I, there's no way i was going to be able to afford that amount no way not even close yeah, so everything i'm doing here on youtube is just for entertainment purposes i'm not putting commercials or ads or anything on my channel ever no I'm not, it's my way to give back to everyone as a veteran just to be entertaining help everyone out and if I can just get one person out there to say hey thank you very much that makes it all worthwhile one person that's all it takes say thank you and I've already had that happen and I was like you're welcome for that DVD player blu-ray player when I worked on that I was like I'm so happy and stoked that that actually helped someone you know just clean that optical lens on it to get it working and it got theirs working again for you know a short amount of time or a much longer amount of time than mine did mine mine i had to probably clean it again and again constantly just to get it to work but the audio went out on it so it's it's sitting over here it's, it's right right there underneath all those papers <laughs> I have it hooked up to my monitor here. And I can watch a video in the background while I'm cleaning or working on something with no audio going. So I'm still using it. Well, I hope that this helps anyone in the future make their decision of whether or not having a fuel oil or having a gas fired boiler in their home for heat. I will show the uh, the systems down. You know, I'll go down to my basement. And I'll, I'll show each of the uh, the devices that I've one was installed. I don't have the documentation for it. It's so old. It's that old. And uh, and then I'll show you the the crown and I'll show you this one here too again. I yeah, I love this one. So see you all very soon. Hey everybody. So I'm back. All right. Here's the original. Will McLean system that I had installed. That's an Aquastat. Don't mind that. <laughs> but that's old too, and I had to replace that as well. And as you can see, that this stuff is just absolutely beat up. Give me one second here. As you can see, all the Chris that was barking out of it when I was having issues with it. There's the numbers. Hopefully, you guys can get those all right. 
Will McLean. As you can see, all the corrosion that was coming off of the. Uh, now, see, this was nothing that was leaking out of here. No, what happened is that this. Uh, where is it at? I was going to give you those, one of those valves. Yeah, but it was leaking from the top of it, and it was leaking all the way down the pipe, and it was just completely destroying all of it. Here's my relief valve that I had to replace on it. But yeah, this thing was just absolutely a nightmare. And this is where the, the reducing valve was attached to the expansion tank. And I just replaced the expansion tank with a new one. And that's what's on the system right now because this was brand new. And I'll show you what the old one is. This expansion tank right here goes onto the actual crown right here. That's the crown PLL furnace. And then this expansion tank goes onto the wheel McLean, the old one. And hence the reason why I needed to replace it is because <clears throat> this particular valve, reducing valve, Built. And that's why I bought a new one. And that new one is now being utilized on the new system. All right, now here is the crown system that we're going to go ahead and change now from the, uh, the installed. This one was actually installed. And yeah, my basement's having issues, so I'll have to do some maintenance down here. I'm sure you guys saw the wall. I tore it out. There's the uh, three zoning valves. I'll get to those. But yeah. I don't know if this still opens or not, but this is what this one looks like on the inside. It is very clean. It doesn't look like it's clean, but it's actually very clean. But for $300, having this instead of this, I mean, I, I had to go for that. I had to get it. And we picked it up. My buddy and I, the one that I'm working on is stereo right now, that Pioneer. He helped me pick this one up. And as payment, <coughs> excuse me, the gentleman that was parting with this after he cut it all out, he, uh, he offered us a fuel oil burn, it was a fuel oil hot water heater. Yeah, a, a fuel oil burner hot water heater. Yeah. Hopefully all my camera work is doing all right for everybody. And there's another taco pump. Now I have three of these, not just this one. <coughs> Not this uh, bell. I have a couple other ones also. And here, let me let me take the bag off of this. I okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Had that bag on there really, really good. But yeah, here's the uh, lines in and out. Here, I'm going to flip the camera around. Hopefully this... We'll help you guys get a different angle of it at least. You may have to tilt your head. <laughs> but, yeah. And this one is in much better shape than this old one. This one right here. Wow, right? I mean... The difference between this model and this model here. I mean, just this unit alone versus this one. Yeah. That's crazy. But man, yeah, when this thing would start up acting up and it would actually have its uh, nozzle, which I'll show you here in a second, clog. Yeah, sorry. I was busy working on it. When these clog up, the noise 
that the system makes. I'm gonna try to get it so that you can actually at least see it some. Camera really doesn't want to pick that up. There we go. And there's no way to, to clean these off or to fix them once they gel up and clog on you. <clears throat> yeah, when that would clog. Okay, this is what I was talking about. This one's brand new. And what happened is that the uh, the flanges on it right here were different than the ones that were for the other pump. And that's why you would ever see any of that corrosion on there. I have hard water here. And this is a brand, brand new, brand new one that has never been installed at all. That I found on my shelf. It has all the parts and pieces. Yeah, I didn't even know I even had this one on my shelf back there, but I found it. So I have this pump right here, which is brand new, which I'll probably end up using next. And then this one right here will be my spare or vice versa. I haven't decided yet, but this, this right here was what my pump for the fuel oil side of things right here was originally using. And one of the uh, guys that I actually had come over did this to it, trying to uh, trying to get me to replace my furnace earlier than it needed to be replaced, that kind of thing. So, yeah, fun times. Um, same guy also crank this system up so hot that it literally smelt like burnt metal in my home. You know, like he, he, the thermostat right here, he like set this so high right here. He set that, that little, sorry, set this right here so high that it, it literally got so hot. It was going to boil over. And, we were just so fortunate that it never had that happen. You know, the whole house smelled like burnt metal. So, yeah, be sure you uh, you check references of whom you have, you know, do maintenance on your equipment. Just because they're, you know, just because they're affordable doesn't mean that they're actually any bit qualified. But, yeah, I didn't know that this was blue. That is neat. I had not seen that one before. This is a brute. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get the actual look for the number on the box here. So you guys could look it up for yourselves too. Maybe a part number or, or something for it. Cool. And then this one I just picked up myself. And this is the new Amtrol tank that I used to. All right, give me a second. That's the float valve that leaked. And I know what somebody is talking about, how you have a, a way to reduce the reducing valve. Um, this is a recycled part right here. This whole tank and this valve came as a part. And then once we're finished using this component, we'll replace it with just the regular. And then here's the zoning valves that I have not 
replaced yet. And what I'll do is I'll have them put a valve right here and a valve right here to shut off the water as well as right here and right here so that I can replace these at any time I want to. And of course I have some leaking right here. They're not leaking now, but they look how much vertebrae is on that. So yeah, it's about time for me to replace a couple of these valves and all that. So this will be the year that I'm going to do that. So yeah, I just felt like sharing this with everybody. Two years having this, and I am super stoked. I absolutely love this system. It is amazing. And it was worth all of the time that I spent waiting for it. Every cell is a wonderful day. Be healthy. Stay safe. Take care, everybody.